the booming South Indian city of Bangalore, capital of the state of Karnataka, has come to be known as Asia's Silicon Valley, only one of its many sobriquets. Today though, we will be looking at one of the prominent avian denizens which call the city their home. It was the red whiskered Indian bulbul, a small, attractive, chirpy and colourful garden bird which initiated me into the world of birding. Learning about its natural history behaviour, habitat, calling and yes, bird photography opens a whole new world. Bulbul is a resident species of India and we have different types of bulbul here. Uh, we can commonly see red whiskered bulbul, red vented bulbul and white broad bulbul here in Bangalore, yellow broad bulbul, flame throated bulbul, all these are seen in Karnataka. The bulbuls belong to the passerine family of birds. We all know that uh, yellow broad is a, a vulnerable species also and some are endemic to particular region. Uh, what happens is they are so well adopted and evolve in that particular area that they cannot survive in any other places. But when it comes to resident species like uh, what we see in Bangalore, like red whiskered, red vented and white broad bulbul, they are well adapted to different types of habitats. So that is why their range is bigger than the endemic species range. These birds are typically 13 to 29 centimeters in length and have feathers that collect gracefully at its hind quarters. Some, like the red whiskered bulbuls, have a splash of red at the bottom of their torso. Bulbuls are usually found in gardens or shrub forests and are typical of arid rain shadow ecosystems. They are often seen in flowering plants and low shrubs in the lush green gardens of beautiful Bangalore, my hometown. Their calls resonate with four to six notes. They typically call in eight different ways. A close observer can understand its language over a period of time. For instance, I have been observing the red whiskered Indian bulbul for three years now in my home garden and I can recognize when it calls its mate, when it is chirping happily, when it issues an alarm call, when it is scanning the horizon, when it simply calls out of boredom or when it is happy or hungry and so on. The red whiskered Indian bulbul called Pycnonotus jocosus is a common garden bird of tropical Africa, sub-Saharan Africa, South and Southeast Asia. They occur naturally from Morocco to Micronesia, the Indian subcontinent including India, Bhutan, Pakistan, Nepal, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka, Myanmar, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam and Indonesia, further east from the Makassar Strait towards the farthest coasts of Indonesia, almost till the coast of Timor-Leste, offer natural habitat for bulbuls. It is also found in Hong Kong, the Korean Peninsula, Japan, Borneo and Taiwan and even southern Hawaii and California where apparently the bulbuls were introduced, meaning they are not native bird life, rather they are considered invasives since they do not occur naturally there. They are also found in the biodiverse parts of the Middle East, Sub-Saharan Africa, Madagascar, the Vanilla Islands of the southeast coast of Africa, that is Mauritius, Seychelles and the Reunion Islands. The tropical weather of these regions helps floral diversity on which these garden birds thrive. In turn, these flowering plants depend on dispersers like birds, bees and butterflies to colonize botanical diversity. The bulbuls are generally frugivorous, feeding on fruits, pollen, seeds, nectar, small vertebrates, bee wax and rarely some carrion. Thus, their role in the balance of the ecosystem is naturally sustainable. Habitat conservation is critical to sustainability of avian diversity and their genetic pool. Further, balancing the equation in the ecosystem are birds of prey, some of which are hunters only, while others are scavengers. 
Hunting birds like black kites, brahmini kites, the Asian coil, eagles, owls, shikras, and vultures occur in varying densities depending on the habitat and threats to their existence. The Asian coil, while not strictly frugivorous nor strictly a hunter, is notorious in the world of natural history. It is known to destroy the eggs of any bird to lay its own eggs in the nest where the native eggs were destroyed. Is this because the male coil does not know how to build a nest? Or is it because of its scavenging or hunting tendencies? It's a question that has baffled ornithologists and bird watchers for decades. When it comes to Asian quail, only during uh, their breeding season, sometimes because of high protein intake, they might consume some insects. Otherwise, they are not known to eat on, uh, they are not carnivores, they are completely frugivores. Now, when it comes to nesting, like I said, uh, it is a parasitic brooder. Quail belongs to cuckoo family and most of the birds in the cuckoo family are parasitic brooders, which means that they don't build their own nest and they go and lay eggs on another bird's nest. And the incubation time of this particular bird is lesser usually than most of the other nests that it chooses. So that this egg hatches first and once the bird comes out, they will push off all the other eggs. So that ensures their survival. Among the other garden birds, the common ones are sunbirds, songbirds, kingfishers, green bee eater, ashy prenia, tailor birds, minas, flycatchers, rose-ringed parakeets, barn owls, hooted owl, kites, pigeons, doves, black-tailed drongo, raptors and a whole host of avian friends. Yeah, we have the ashiprinia, we have uh, several varieties of bulbuls, we have uh, kingfishers. As I said, I have personally logged on one day about 150 species. Any commonly found tree is good for these lovable, friendly, brightly coloured birds and it is no wonder that they are considered the garden birds of the tropics. It is this disarmingly friendly nature of the bulbuls that traps them in the lure of the poacher. Bulbuls are the mainstay of bird markets in Thailand, Indonesia, Singapore, Laos, Vietnam and Cambodia. What a tragic irony that these beautiful birds fall victim to illegal trade in their own natural homes. Instead, by nurturing their habitat, these birds can be healthy and hearty and give us a visual treat too. Today, only the older residential suburbs with bungalows and lovable gardens are home to these thriving birds. Synchronizing with the hydrometeorological or weather cycles, the monsoon blesses the Indian Ocean Rim states with a horticultural profligacy in time for the birth of a new generation of bulbuls. In Sri Lanka, the monsoon months of April and May yield a juicy, tropical, fruiting legacy that is the envy of others. We still do not know how, but climate change can potentially mix the gene pool of wildlife between India and Sri Lanka. The bulbuls start courting during the southwest monsoons in the Indian subcontinent, that is, between April to September. By the end of the monsoons, the pairs have cemented their relationship. The nest building activities start by the end of November and stretch till the end of March. By February, the females start laying their eggs and roosting in their fragile nests. The females roost or incubate their eggs for about two weeks. On hatching, the young ones take about 21 days to develop their wings. In this period, the devoted parents not only guard their nestlings with dedication, but also feed their young ones with a diverse banquet of insects, bees, ants and the like, hunted from the gardens and parks where they nest. Even the late Latifs would have laid their eggs latest by early May. The young ones flee their nest in time for the arrival of monsoons when food is plentiful. The swing in the wind helps them take flight effortlessly. Sri Lanka is sometimes referred to as an island bird sanctuary because its avian diversity is so distinct and unique. The confluence of ocean currents at the head of the Indian Ocean 
and at the lap of two seas of the Indian Ocean, Bay of Bengal and the Arabian Sea, indulges Sri Lanka in unending balmy weather, Pacific seas, botanical diversity and unparalleled fish diversity. So it is not just the staple fare of garden birds, even the whistling thrush finds itself in the gardens in Sri Lanka's bungalows. It's a common sight and sound but royal in presence. It is this biodiverse ecosystem that augments the presence of other avian royals like paradise flycatchers, tickles blue flycatcher, other flycatchers, starlings, parakeets, pelicans, peasants, purple rumped sunbirds, among others. These lofty leafy bungalows in Bangalore nurture lush green gardens. There are some bungalows hosting dozens of tree species. Tile-roofed heritage bungalows supporting creepers inside their open courtyards even support the sparrow, which is no longer a common sight in Bangalore. Bangalore as a garden city hosts a lush green garden paradise indeed. The city's older suburbs of Basavanagudi, Maleshwaram, Chamrajpet and Jainagar in Bangalore proudly nurture a lush green heritage in their bungalows, justifying the epithet that Bangalore was indeed the pensioner's paradise. Indeed, Bangalore was a pensioner's paradise till the 24-7 IT economy took a toll on plant, animal and human diversity in this once beautiful and bountiful city. Bangalore and many other modern cities face the pressure of industrial development. There is a need to legally conserve buildings older than 100 years old by designating them as heritage buildings. Now, as we know, every country is supposed to have 33% of forest cover. Now, in urban spaces where we don't have forests, it is important that we maintain these green spaces. In Bangalore, there are a lot of places where there is green, which is why we in Bangalore are able to breathe oxygen-filled air. Now, there's also a survey from IASE that says every human being requires about seven to eight trees to have healthy amount of oxygen in the atmosphere. Now, in, in case of Bangalore, it is already the other way. Uh, for example, for every uh, tree, there are about seven people who are taking oxygen. So if there is uncontrolled urbanization, then definitely uh, the city will become unsustainable and people here will face a lot of problems because of it. We make sure that our development process is in a sustainable way to ensure future generation get all the natural resources and also at the same time support all the biodiversity around us. Now there's also a concept in many other countries wherein any building that is over 100 years old, there's a provision that they can be considered as a heritage site and there are a lot of provisions from the governments that they get in order to preserve it. These lovely edifices not only host some old world traditional people, but also an unparalleled avian heritage. Fruit eating or frugivorous bulbuls are blessed indeed to live in the lush green gardens of the Basavanagudi bungalows. The toll that development extracts must be softened. Destroying precious tree lined avenues and courtyard laced villas and bungalows will rob future generations of their avian heritage. Since the garden birds are resilient to forest degradation, it falls on gardens to offer genetic diversity to garden birds in the tropics. Mm -hmm.